What's happening? Welcome to the Matt Bernier Show, part of the In The Money Media Network. My name is Matt Bernier. You can follow me on Twitter at Bernier underscore Matt. Today is Tuesday, October the 20th, 2020. However you listen to this thing, thank you for doing so. It's episode 37. Wild that that much time has gone by. You can find this podcast a number of places. If you are someone who listens only to the audio, you can listen on Apple Podcasts or a number of different things. Android device. However you listen to your podcast, you can find them there. Or you can listen on YouTube. All you need to do is search Matt Bernier's show in the search bar. This episode, along with the 36 prior episodes, will pop up. However you listen, though, please rate, review, and subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave us a little couple comments. It goes a long way helping us sort of branch out a little bit. So any help that you can offer is greatly appreciated. Um, Obviously, no video this week. So if you're on YouTube, you just have the slate. I am in Kennebunkport, Maine. This is a first. I'm recording from uh, my car. I am away for my first wedding anniversary. With my wife, we were supposed to, we were planning on going to Banff, the uh, Canadian Rockies this year, obviously with the border closed and COVID and things. We decided to just shoot up our own coast in New England. So here for a couple days, and uh, this was the only opportunity I had to uh, record this thing. So I'm in the car, and this is going to be a tight one. There's really not going to be a lot to sink your teeth into other than planning accordingly and and hopefully getting some interaction from folks who listen to this on a regular basis or even some of you who may be new to the show. Um, first things first, uh, contacted uh, Trish Smith, who was the winner of last week's Friday feature from the Valley View. Uh, looking forward to having her on next Monday to talk about whatever the Friday feature is yet. We'll wait and see what the race is drawn and end up looking like. Uh, she had noted that she was a little bit, you know, a bit of a novice, kind of learning the ropes and, and could understand if, if we wanted somebody with more experience. I said, no, no, this is the kind of thing I think that helps all of us in the long run and also can help someone like Trish or anybody else who's new sort of kind of get their feet wet. And hopefully, uh, I, I've, you know, I've said it for a long time. The comment section has been very... I've been very pleased with it on YouTube. I feel like that's a great sort of forum where people throw out opinions and and offer up advice and and different things. And hopefully someone like Trish and anybody else who's new to this thing can sort of can learn from what folks have to offer in that section. And for the most part, it's been very cordial amongst people. So uh, looking forward to have Trish on there next week talking about some racing. And I'm sure we'll go over a number of other things as well. Also something to get on your radar going forward as we get closer and closer to the Breeders' Cup. And really, this is what kind of this thing is going to encompass. Uh, for RacingPicks.com, you'll be able to find a video up uh, next week at some point. Myself and my buddy Mike Mutnansky. Some of you uh, will probably be familiar with Mike. Uh, some of you may not be. He's a uh, sports radio personality in Boston, Massachusetts for Sports Radio WEEI. But he's a big-time Big time handicapper. He is as sharp as they come. He and I have done a number of things uh, at Mohegan Sun throughout the years with Zach Montoya's help, uh, doing seminars and, and things of that nature. He's going to come on, and we are going to do a, a little bit of a just nothing crazy, five, ten minutes talking Breeders' Cup well in advance, recognizing that the fields won't be finalized yet. Pre entries won't even be out yet, I don't think. But the idea is going to be looking at favorites that we believe in looking at favorites that we think we're going to try to fade and reasons why, and also maybe some prices, a horse or two that we're really looking forward to getting involved in and using in our wagers. And that kind of dovetails into what I'd like to do for this show, maybe not next week, but the Monday of the Breeders' Cup. I don't know when I'm traveling to Lexington yet. It'll either be Sunday or Tuesday of that week. For NBC and all of our coverage down there, we've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday is betting the Breeders' Cup, as we've done over the past handful of years, myself and the whole crew. And then Friday, Saturday, obviously, the Breeders' Cup World Championships. But for the Monday show, given that I'll either be in a hotel room or I'll be planning to travel the next day from my home, I'd like to do the same thing I'm doing with Mike for RacingPicks.com, but on the pod and with all of you the folks who listen, the folks who watch. So effectively, I would like to get somewhere, and this is also kind of an idea that um, I'll give credit to Andrew Champagne and J.D. Fox. I thought they did a really a really smooth, slick thing. I was part of it, and, and many other Twitter sort of racing folks were involved with their derby um, sort of show that they, they just asked for an opinion on the undercard. And 
I, you know, I, I'm going to steal sort of the, the model of that from them, but at the same time, I want it to be basically what I'm doing with Mutt for RacingPicks.com. So here's the, here's the request. If you want to be involved with the show for Monday of Breeders' Cup Week, I need a horse, a favorite that you like, a favorite that you think is vulnerable, and a price. Can be in any of those Breeders' Cup races over the two days. And recognizing that we won't have final fields just yet, but you, you'll have a pretty good idea at that point. Post positions, yes, they'll need to be drawn and, and things of that nature, but you'll have a pretty good idea, and nobody will hold it against you for whatever reason. The horses don't end up, you know, they late scratch or whatever the case may be. No, we, we all understand it. But I'd like to get somewhere between 10 and 15 folks. So I'll cap it at 15, but I'd like to have a minimum of 10. And I don't want it to, I mean, I'm not opposed to reaching out to people in the industry to help out, but I'd like it to be kind of what we've been doing for the the uh, Friday feature. I want it to be you guys and gals. If you have ideas and thoughts and things of that nature. So the way this is going to work in a perfect world, if you guys are on board, you'll need to email me and I will give the email address in the way that we're going to do this thing. You'll have to email me some sort of a clip, whether it's audio, but preferably video, a two to three minute, you know what I'm going to say, two to three, no more than three minutes, no less than a minute. I'm sure some of you may be a little bit camera shy, but we can make this thing work. I'm not going to ask for anything too wild. One to three minutes of your favorite that you want to back your favorite that you want to fade and a price just one i don't need anything crazier than that but i need a little bit of reasoning for all three of those why do you like the favorite in whatever race it may be why are you against the favorite in whatever race it may be and you like a price in whatever race for what reason minimum 10 people max 15 the way i'd like to put this thing together in the comment section beneath the video player on YouTube for this episode here, episode 37. All you need to do is write in Breeders' Cup Feature. Those three words, Breeders' Cup Feature. And I will come through and I will leave a comment beneath yours if you are one of the, the 15 or if there are only 10 of you or whatever the case may be. I will leave the email address in a comment beneath your comment. So make sure you're paying attention to... Make sure that notification, the bell icon's lit up so you get notified whenever someone responds to your comment. That'll be me. I'll be the one responding more likely than not. Breeders' Cup feature. Write those three words in the comment section beneath the video player on this week's episode. I will then send you the email address where you can contact me. Send me the clip. Minimum of one minute, maximum of three minutes with those three things. The favorite you're backing, the favorite you're fading, and a price for the Breeders' Cup. It could be any of the 14 races. They don't all have to be in the same race. Obviously, fading a favorite and backing a favorite, they can't be in the same race. They can be any races you want of those two days. Give me those three things with a little bit of reasoning why. And that will be the Matt Bernier show for the Monday of Breeders' Cup week. You're going to be able to find my opinions in about 15 different spots. Uh, I know we're doing some work within the money. Uh, obviously, PTF and I and JK, I'm sure we'll be putting something together. You'll be able to see me three days on NBC and NBCSN. There's a million places you'll be able to find. I'll be doing Mutt's podcast. I'll be doing a number of different things. So there's no sense in, in just sort of rehashing what you can find of mine in a number of different places. Let's open this thing up. We'll get some different opinions from all of you, the folks who have been loyal listeners and viewers from day one. Uh, I'm hopeful this is something everyone will want to take part in, and it's effectively the Friday feature, but it's for the Breeders' Cup, and it has a couple little tweaks to it. So again, three things. Favorite you want to fade, favorite you want to back, price you want to play in any of the Breeders' Cup races. If you want to be involved, beneath the video player on YouTube for this episode, episode 37, all you need to write is Breeders' Cup feature. I will then respond with the email address, Email me a clip, a video clip recorded on your phone, however you want to do it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just want to make sure we can hear you, obviously. that That's kind of an important part. So make sure if you're talking into... I'm, look, I'm recording this on my phone right now with the, the, the Apple you know, headphones. And it comes out pretty clear. 
So if you want to record it that way, if you want to record it on your computer, your laptop, whatever it may be, record a one to three minute piece, send it my way to that email address. I'll send it to producer Craig. He'll do his his magic, splice it together, and we'll be good. And I think it'll be a fun, interesting way for those of you who have been listening and viewing uh, and watching this thing for for many, many months now and going even farther back if you were one of the folks back with the old three-letter company to just kind of get it out there and, and have everyone a little bit of a, a open forum, a bit of a round table. So minimum of 10 people, max of 15, just because don't want the, the pod to go on forever in a day. So if you're interested, please get involved beneath the video player on YouTube for this episode, episode 37. All you need to write, Breeders' Cup feature, and I'll get back to you. Uh, as far as racing and things this past weekend, uh, to be honest, didn't really watch a ton of it. Um, other than Saturday, I know I had a brutal day on Saturday. Those of you who watched my uh, picks on racing picks this week, the week as a whole was really solid. I think I was up over 50% for 18 or 20 picks. Um, Saturday I was over five and I think I hit the board once. So no good there, but at least I feel like I'm in decent form heading into the Breeders' Cup. Um, hopefully that'll translate to the BCBC and a good showing there. Uh, looking forward to that. Trying to think if there's anything else, uh, really sort of pertinent that needs to to get out there i mean this would be a record short show we're just over 10 minutes but um those are the big things next week i'm sure i'm also going to start when i get home looking at some uh breeders cup specific charts i know a number of people enjoyed the keeneland track profile uh episode from last week i'm going to basically repeat that but i'm going to go through and look at the breeders cup for i don't even know how many years um but sort of identify some races that may be a little bit more volatile than others uh, some where maybe they're a little bit more formful than others and things like that. And maybe I'll just sort of wrap all that into a, a show next week, along with the Friday feature, again, with our guest, uh, Trish Smith. So that's what's on deck next week. Again, I uh, will have a video out uh, toward the end of next week for RacingPicks.com. Um, again, RacingPicks.com, it's free. All you need to do is enter your email address. You're good to go. You get content all throughout the week. Uh, but a video of my buddy, Mike Mutnansky, you can follow him on Twitter, at MuttWEEI be talking about the three things that hopefully you all will be talking about on this show in a couple weeks. Favorite we like, a favorite we don't like, and a price that we might like. For the Breeders' Cup World Championships, we're only a few weeks away from those. The first week in November down at Keeneland Racecourse, hopefully the weather holds up. I get it. Long-term forecast this far in advance is kind of a silly thing. Uh, Last I had seen, it looks pretty promising. I think there's a chance of some wet weather on Friday, but again, I mean, how accurate is it two weeks in advance? It's hard to be accurate three days in advance. Forget about two weeks in advance. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully everything ends up going off without a hitch. If we get weather comparable to what we had five years ago when Pharaoh completed the Grand Slam, I mean, the weather was far from phenomenal, but it was it was doable. That I think that's the hope. You know, anything above 50 degrees and dry is probably a win for November, uh, what are we, 6 and 7 in Lexington, Kentucky. I think that would be a win. Hopefully we can, hopefully we can scratch out something like that. Um, but that's basically what we're looking at. Again, if you uh, listen to this show more so than watch it, that's entirely up to you. A number of people have different ways of listening to things, uh, whether it's on the phone or in the car or on YouTube. However you listen, please rate, review, and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, make sure that bell icon is lit up, especially if you want to be involved with this Breeders' Cup feature. Uh, because, again, when the bell lit- icon is lit up, you get notified whenever I will leave the comment beneath yours. So, um, again, all you need to do in the search bar on YouTube, search Matt Burney or show, you'll get this episode as well as the 36 prior. If you're on Apple Podcasts or you're on your Android device or you're on any number of platform, SoundCloud, however you listen to this thing, inthemoneypodcast.com, where you can find this as well as all the other content that In The Money Podcast has to offer, the Players Podcast, JK Plus One, Talk Racing to Me with Naomi Tucker, The Red Board Rewind, with Spencer Luganbuehl, you name it. There's a million different things. Nick Luck Daily Podcast, Racing Picks Players Podcast, million different things. Number of written pieces as well, inthemoneypodcast.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Bernie or underscore Matt. I apologize for this being a short episode this week, but again, a unique circumstance um, up here, and I'll be heading home in a, in a day or two. So uh, until next Monday, when we come back and things are more or less back to normal for this show, uh, good luck however you play, whatever you play, and wherever you play. This has been episode 37, record time, just under 15 minutes of the Matt Bernie Show. <laughs>